a smart and promising my dear students welcome to a brief lecture on the pala empire contribution to art and architecture before i coming to the point just to i make a revision the pala empire was founded by gopal and uh, gopal constructed a inward city kodandpuri now it's bihar sharif then the other ruler is dharmpal a very important ruler who caused the construction of a university in vikramshila a bhagalpur and the govind pal is the last ruler of pala dynasty so now come to the point the pala empire contribution to art and architecture the pala empire was founded by gopal probably in 750 ad then come to the art pal art is one of the best contemporary art forms of our country it developed during the medieval period a uh, between 8th to 12th century under the aegis of pal rulers pal rulers were buddhist followers you know and which can be seen in the art forms of palas are very easily pal art included a various forms of art and crafts which uh, include a splendid architectural art forms she mahavihar chatyas a temples and astupas okay a sculptures say bronze and uh, stone made and paintings say manuscript and wall paintings paintings across the walls let us see all of them one by one architectural art forms in terms of architectural art form architecture a pal period was very important in this many architectural art forms such as mahavihar chatyas temples and astupas were developed okay to make these architectures burnt bricks were used now come to mahaviharas mahaviharas were made uh, during pal rule mainly for residential purposes for buddhist monks but mahaviharas also served as important uh, buddhist educational centers i'll say this way the question may be asked what are the uh, contribution of uh, pal rulers towards the education how the pal rulers contributed to the domain of education there may be question of this pattern as well so now come to the mahaviharas mahaviharas were generally in re rectangular shape rectangular this way rectangular okay length and breadth so mahaviharas were generally in rectangular in the structure which which included an open courtyard in the middle all around the courtyard porch 
veranda was each to be made in which uh, gates of rooms were opened. Some Mahaviras were in which gates of rooms were opened. Some Mahaviras had double storied, the first and second. Now uh, you get the design of the building. Rooms and stairs for the second story, the rooms were made in the courtyard. Chathiyas. These were basically a kind of a Buddhist temples, okay? What are the Chathiyas? Chathiyas were a kind of Buddhist temples, remember? The tradition of building Chathiyas were old, but these got diversification during Pal rule. Very important point. Many remains of Chathiyas can be found from different parts of Bihar. Temples. Although Pal rulers were Buddhist, but they also made many temples of Hinduism. <coughs> These temples were basically made in the uh, famous Nagar style. Remember, temples were made in Nagar style. The style of the temple were Nagar style. Some important examples of temples were Gufa Mandir, Kailgaon, it is there in Bhagalpur. Have you seen? But we should be. I have also not seen. Okay. There are so many um, beautiful historical sites and constructions. Monuments are there in Bihar, but we go to move out of Bihar for education tour. But so many things are lying in Bihar, in and around us. And it is all uh, attacked us to see them. And so I think uh, I make an appeal also to you that you must see our historical site, sites in Bihar, okay? And this is also true to me, okay? So, uh, uh, you so called the temples, so Gupha Mandir, Kailgaon, uh, Bhagalpur, Vishnupad Mandir, you know, uh, Bodh Gaya, it's hardly, it's okay, okay, 120 kilometers from us. Uh, uh, important feature of this temple in uh, Ardh Mandap. Astup, Astup, all the culture, all the culture of Astupas were ancient, okay? But some Astupas were also made during Pahal period with slight differentiation. What are the differentiations here? Astupas contain the relics of Buddha and Bodhisattvas. Basically, Astupas were made to hide the relics of Buddha or Bodhi, Bodhisattva inside them. Astupas has multiple parts which include Ashri, Shatra, Harmik, Gumbat, Raksinga, Pat, Verika, and Toran Dwar. Now come to the paintings. Okay? There were two types of paintings uh, which were used to be done during Pal rule. One Manuscript painting and next one, wall painting. I told you earlier also. Now come to the manuscript paintings. Manuscript paintings were done generally on copper plate. Remember, very important fact for the PT point of view. So manuscript paintings were done generally on copper plate. These were used for decorating purposes. The colors used in these paintings were red, okay, black, blue, white and one more class, violet. Important examples of manuscript paintings are okay, Ast Sahasarik, Agyap, Armita and Panchrakshak. Both of these paintings, remember these two paintings, both of these paintings are archived in Cambridge Museum, England. Very important points are there. Now come the wall paintings. Besides manuscript painting, wall paintings were also used to be done on the walls of what? Mahavihar, Chatyas, temples, etc. In these paintings, various elements like fruits, flowers, animals, humans, birds, and trees were imprinted. Okay? One of the best examples of wall paintings of Pal Empire is a wall painting found from Shraikela. Naranda. 
In this painting, a woman can be seen doing makeup. A still important point. While looking into a mirror, it is all lively. It seems to be all li lively, right? Uh, this painting shows the human emotions along with art simultaneously. A sculptural art forms, beside architectural and painting art forms, there is a sculptural art also got a phenomenal during this empire and developed too. Mainly two types of uh, sculptural art is found uh, from pulpriate. One is the bronze sculptures and next one is the stone sculptures. Bronze, have you ever seen bronze sculptures and stone sculptures? Yes, you can see it in the book. Though, now these sculptures have, been not, have not been shown on the show card here. But now you can find them or you can see these sculptures in books. So let's come back. Bronze sculptures. These are made of bronze using molds. One of the main characteristic features of these sculptures were excellent ornamentation used in them. Another important feature of these sculptures was that they were plain form, uh, plain form behind despite being ornamented and decorated from front. Dhiman and Vitpal were two important sculptures of Nalanda. Remember? Remember the two important sculptures of Nalanda? One is Dhiman, another one is Vitpal. Remember? They were contemporary of Dharampal and Devpal, Pal rulers. Bronze sculptures are found in large numbers from Kulkihar, Gaya, Nalanda, and Sultan Ganj. This Sultan, Sultan Ganj is now in Jharkhand. These sculptures can be compared with the aesthetics of the Nataraj sculptures of Chola dynasty. Okay? These sculptures were mainly religious in nature, which include sculptures, various gods and goddesses of Hindus and Buddhists. Important examples of these sculptures uh, style were of Buddha, Vishnu, Balram, Bodhisattva. Stone sculptures, besides bronze sculptures, sculptures were also made of stones. Clear? I think you are not getting interested. Okay, uh, you must have to give attention to other lecture. So now the stones used for making these sculptures were mainly basalt, very important point, which were brought from either Munger or Santhal Pragana. Similar to bronze sculptures, ornamentation was also done in stone-made sculptures. Critical analysis of Pal art. Architectures in Pal period were generally made of brunt Bricks, burnt, burnt bricks. Okay. So again to repeat, now here is a critical analysis of PAL art and analysis is as such. Architectures in PAL in PAL period were generally made of what? Burnt bricks in a sheet of stones and rocks. A very, very important point, which resulted into leisure, uh, permanence, and availability of now. Sculptures of pal art were plain from behind and only focus was on front. Ornamentation was heavily used in the pal sculptures, which hide the real beauty of the sculptures. In pal art, religious aspects had uh, more prominence than uh, social, cultural, and political aspects. Now come to the conclusion. Before the lecture to be over, the conclusion is as such. Multiple art forms developed permanently during the period of Pal rulers, despite the triangular conflict among Pal, Rajkotas, and Gurjar Patiaras for occupation of Kanaws, various, various art forms were flourished during the Pal period without any impediments. The Pal rulers maintained the tradition of art and culture developed during modern period raised them to a new level. 
Thanks for giving me a patience listening.